I just got to say that there was a lot, and I mean a lot of news that just leaked for Sony's PlayStation 5 and the future of the company. People leaving the company, how they want to get rid of some studios, and how the pivot to games as a service might have irritated a lot of the main creators over at their first party studios. Let's get into everything going on because for the first time, I actually see Sony struggling a lot for the next several years as Xbox is hitting their stride and creating visions that they've seen for several years. Let's get into all of this because it is quite insane. All right, so you know the drill. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you wanna be notified on future content, hit that small little bell icon. And if you wanna go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. All the support is greatly appreciated. All right, so I'm just going to actually talk about this for a little bit because let's be real, for the last several months, if not the last year and a half, I've always said that Sony's PlayStation isn't the same Sony that we saw from 2013 to about 2018, 2019. It is not the same Sony. They are not dominating as people think. Now, are they bringing out great first party games? Of course, but like I've said for multiple, multiple years and in multiple videos, I think a lot of that foundation like Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok and everything else from Horizon Forbidden West was all foundational from Sean Layden and the leadership he had and the people in place he had at the studios. Now, fast forward to present day. We know that Jim Ryan is actually leaving the company and he will be gone by, I believe it's April of next year. And the transition of new leadership is going to shake things up. But now what's happening is a lot of people are starting to leave. And I'm just gonna jump into this article and talk about what's happening. The head of production at PlayStation, Connie Booth, has allegedly left PlayStation after 34 years. Citing four unnamed sources, David Jaffe has taken to YouTube to claim that Connie Booth has left PlayStation after 34 years. Here's what I can tell you. She is no longer at Sony, right? I don't have a lot of details. I don't know if she has fired or laid off. When I heard the story, everyone was telling me she was fired, Jaffe said. He continued to say that Connie's team also walked out and Angie Smets, who worked at Gorilla for 20 years, would be taking Booth's role, while Jaffe continued to say that these are just things he's heard and not completely verified. He doubled down on Booth leaving Sony and said, the Connie thing is pretty much true because I've heard it from four people, two in and two out of Sony. Now, I'm going to kind of talk about this a little bit and take credit. I said a while ago when Jim Ryan did leave Sony or when he said he was gonna step down, I said that Herman Holst might even take that mantle, but also bring somebody up from Gorilla. Lo and behold, look who's coming up from Gorilla, reportedly, this new person, Angie Smets, that they're going to try to take and change that leadership. Because let's be real, Gorilla Games did make one of the best new franchises that Sony's had in several years, and they made some of the best technology and first party technology that Sony uses consistently and brings it to other developers where they make money. Not to mention, they have grown a massive amount. I think they are over four to 500 people strong at that development site. So I know that Herman Holst has a lot of pull and his leadership and his pull within Sony is massive. But this isn't the only thing. Getting rid of somebody that was a head of production and has been at the company for 34 years is huge. There is a massive shakeup happening at Sony right now, and I have to say it's gonna be make or break in the next several years to see what actually happens at Sony. What are they going to pivot to? Which brings me to what happened now. Now, I'm gonna get into these things, breaking news that's been confirmed by David Jaffe, but it's not confirmed news just yet. Here's what's being said on Twitter. Connie Booth was not let go. She did not retire. She was fired. Sean Layden was escorted out of the building when he was let go. Jim Ryan was convinced that games as a service was the future and told PlayStation first party studios to start making them. PlayStation studios were unhappy about this direction. The cancellation of factions made a lot of PlayStation studios upset, causing internal turmoil. 
Between that and the Games as a Service direction, Sony blamed it on Connie Booth and fired her. The vast majority of people who worked under Connie are gone, and it seems they left at the same time as she did. Angie Smets is awesome, no negative things to say about her. Apparently, Herman Holst was in favor of cutting all of the Japanese studios. Jaffe's contact wasn't a big fan of Herman. All right, that is a lot to dissect. The first thing I want to say is that Sean Layden was obviously, it was a hostile thing. He was battling with Jim Ryan and lost. Even though Sean Layden did a lot of great things for PlayStation, they got rid of him, moved on, and now you can see hindsight's 2020. That might not have been the best decision because I'll be real, Sean Layden has a lot of respect across the industry. People love him and he brought PlayStation into one of their most profitable and best generations ever in the PlayStation 4. Let's not mince words here and let's be very clear. Sean Layden was a boss. He did a lot of things that helped PlayStation do what they needed to do. Now, Jim Ryan pivoting to games as a service was something I've said for a very long time. I've actually said this for about two years now that the next show, which was this past show that they had, this past showcase of PlayStation was all Jim Ryan's vision. Games as a service, nothing too big, and a Spider-Man 2 game that had foundation of Sean Layden laid all across it. And you know what happened? A lot of PlayStation fans hated it. A lot of Xbox fans made fun of it. And I will say as a gamer, I was disappointed in it. So I don't see this as a big surprise that there is going to be a big shakeup because I think everybody at Sony, PlayStation, and the first party studios were starting to get mad and pulling some of their weight and going to Sony saying, this isn't right. What we're doing isn't what we're built for. So I'm expecting to see a lot of layoffs happen in the next several months. I'm not saying that is a good thing. Layoffs suck. But if you were brought on and hired directly to make games as a service games and that direction has shifted, well, your job's gonna shift. You're either gonna get moved to another department, another team to work on something else, or you're going to be let go because your services are no longer required for something they're not building. I think that this is going to happen for at least a year. It's going to take Sony a while to recover from this. Now, do they have games in the works? Of course they do. But a lot of the games are going to be games as a service and games that people within PlayStation don't enjoy making. So I don't know how good they're gonna be, how grandiose they're gonna be, if they're gonna be games that everybody loves. I'm sure they might get one hit out of that, maybe, but overall, it's not going to be the same Sony everybody thought. And I think this is happening at one of the worst points in the generation. First being, because Xbox seems to have a clear vision of who they're going to be. They are doubling down on games. They just bought Activision Blizzard King and they are going to be moving forward outside of the hardware. Xbox just reported massive earnings, which I'm gonna make a video about later this week. But right now, Xbox is dominating. They have a lot of things going for them. Was the ABK deal in the works and maybe not gonna go through or go through? Sure, but now that it's gone through, Xbox has a clear vision of concentrating on Game Pass, first party games, and bringing out big games every single quarter, if not multiple in a quarter, to drive the money up of what Game Pass is gonna be for the console, PC number one, and then of course mobile down the line. Do not get it twisted. This is a massive competition with multiple billion dollars on the line, and Sony is playing behind the eight ball right now. Yes, they're dominating console sales. Yes, they're dominating a lot of other things, but they are not dominating the overall gaming market share and everything that's happening. There's a lot of players now. There's a lot of competition, and Xbox knows that. Everybody else knows that. And to be honest, Sony knows that, and that's why these changes are happening. I'm glad it's happening because I was not impressed with that last showcase that they did. I was actually very disappointed, and I'm disappointed because as a gamer, I want competition. I want competition throughout the industry. I want PlayStation to pressure Xbox, and I want Xbox to pressure Sony because that just gives me, as a gamer, great games. I'm loving Spider-Man right now. I'm loving all the games I'm playing, but this is very disheartening and disconcerting to see this happening at multiple PlayStation studios because I'm going to be frank. They are some of the best studios in the industry. They bring out some of the best games and I love playing them and I wanna see more of that. I don't wanna see games as a service from them. If you wanna make a studio that does that, go right ahead. Use Bungie to do that. But don't take these other studios that have a lot of talent and have cultivated that talent for a certain game type, which is of course those Sony narrative third person over the shoulder type of games that people tend to love. 
But let me know what you think about all this. Are you surprised that there's this much turmoil within Sony's PlayStation? Do you think this gives Xbox a leg up on what they're going to do in their future? And do you think Sony's going to start pivoting away from games as a service? And how is this going to affect their first party roadmap of releases? That's one thing that people have been asking for is a roadmap. And now we're looking that that roadmap might change drastically in the next several years. So is Sony going to be able to keep track and keep dominating like they have without any games coming out? Let me know down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support ups out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I've been jumping into Spider-Man 2. I'm loving every minute of it. I'm about five or six hours into the game, and I have to say, I'm doing everything. I'm gonna do every single side quest. I'm just gonna have fun with it, go through the story, enjoy all the characters, because I do have to say that Insomniac knows what they're doing. They make an amazing game. And Spider-Man is one of the best, if not the best superhero game I've ever played. I love every single minute of it. I love the Batman games. I love the Spider-Man games. And I can't wait for Wolverine. So, so far, this is one of my game of the year. And I got to say, it's up there with Diablo and, of course, all those other games like Jedi. This game is just hitting it right for me right now. I'm sitting there playing it for an hour at a time or two hours. I can't wait to get to the weekend where I could jump into it for several hours. But let me know what you're playing. Are you playing something on your Xbox, your PC? Are you on your PlayStation 5 playing Spider-Man 2 like me? Or are you on your Switch or your Rogue Alley or whatever you're on? Let me know what you're playing because that's what we're here for. It's to talk games. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.